Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for this week's sermon. I'm excited to share with you a message I believe the Lord has given me that is going to challenge you and strengthen and encourage your heart for the journey God has you on. Stick around afterwards so I can say a prayer over you, your situation, and your family. Thank you again for joining us. Amen. Once you stand to your feet this morning, if you got your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 10. In verse 46, Mark chapter 10 and verse 46, I want to read to you a very familiar story. I've actually preached on this several times, and I'll, I'll say that in a few minutes in my sermon. But I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I've ever preached anything, this is what the Lord has for this morning specifically. Um, verse 46, now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho, with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Father, we love you today and we thank you today for all you're doing in hearts and lives. And Father, I know where the enemy wants to bring doubt and confusion, not just to our nation, to our world, but even in lives and families. Father, right now, I speak life, I speak wholeness, I speak unity right now. I just thank you for the Spirit of God that is moving, for what you already confirmed this morning and what you're confirming in people's hearts. And Father, I just know there's some people that walked in here with something today, and as you've already talked to me this morning and helped reassure me, they're going to walk out of here different than how they came in this building. So Father, we thank you for shackles being broken we thank you for blind eyes being open we thank you father for all that you're gonna do in Christ's name we pray and by the power of the Holy Spirit and all God's people together said amen look at your neighbor and say I'm glad I get to sit by you and you may be seated I recently was embarrassed because I was in a place and somebody looked at me and they said, extra large. I'm like, excuse me? They're like, extra large. Well, I just bought a shirt, t-shirt, and it didn't have any wrinkles in it, so there was no reason to wash it or iron it, and they were, and I said, excuse me? And they kept pointing, and I realized I had left the extra large sticker on my shirt and they were pointing at it saying extra large. And I wanted to say, you're about to have an extra large fist in your mouth if you keep saying that to me. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. The truth is, we like to label people and things. And if we're not careful, we label people many times by what has happened to them, by what they've experienced. Throughout the Bible, we see this David. He's labeled as a boy that nobody really wanted because he's out there as a shepherd boy, and his dad's having this big old party and getting all kinds of people to line up to be the king, and David's left alone. Rahab is labeled as a prostitute. That's what we know her as, Rahab the prostitute. Women in the Bible in the New Testament are called things like the woman caught in the act of adultery or the woman with the issue of blood. They're, caused, they're talked about by what they were going through. And today, we find the exact same thing. We find a man, and he's known by his condition. His name is Blind Bartimaeus. Not just Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, but not just Bartimaeus. He's known as Blind Bartimaeus. The Bible wanted to be sure that you understand the conditions he's in. And this morning, I want to be honest with you. As I was getting ready to prepare for this message, 
and I began to think, Lord, why exactly am I preaching this? Because I've preached on blind Bartimaeus many times. I mean, even a couple years ago, and I try not to repeat my sermons unless the Holy Spirit just makes me do it. And I kept thinking, and so as I'm looking at the story saying, Lord, I, I promise you, I went through every sermon I preached in 14 years, the title of every one, trying to think, maybe there's another message I need to preach. Maybe there's something else. And the Lord just kept saying, go back to this, go back to this, go back to this. And so finally, I did that, and, and, and the Lord showed me something all of a sudden that I've never noticed before and it was just one word and the word was this he said look at that line and it says now they came to Jericho a side note last night at 10 30 at night I'm sitting at home and if you parents understand this everybody's asleep I turned the lights out had the TV on and on the news just muted the, the light of the TV is the only thing in the room I'm sitting there everything's quiet because the kids are in bed my wife's already in bed and I'm sitting there going over my sermon and it's 10 30 at night and I'm once again saying Lord I'm going to do this but I mean people are going to think I hadn't didn't study I just resurrected an old sermon and I, I we have an app we use that, that gives us the order of service and I put my scriptures on there my points on there so that our media team has them and so about 10 30 it dawned on me you never looked at the order of service this week and put your scriptures down and and so I get on my iPad and I get on this app and I go to put my scriptures and as I look at the order of service, I did not have any idea the first song that we sang today was called Jericho. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I told you to preach this earlier in the week. And I said, yes sir, I'm listening, I'm ready to go now. I'm not going to argue with you any longer. The reason this is important is because we understand the significance of Jericho in the Old Testament. The children of Israel have just gone to the promised land, and one of the first battles they face is this big thing called Jericho. Here's a walled city, a big place, and people are maybe above them. This is probably a movie I should not quote in church. Have you ever seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? And you remember those guys at the top shouting down, you know, your mother smells of elderberry or whatever it is. They're yelling at people. I imagine Jericho, somebody standing on the wall screaming down at these people but God tells them something I want you to march around here for six days one time a day you march around the walls and on the seventh day I want you to march around seven times and you just trust me you blow the trumpet when I say blow the trumpet you do what I ask you to do and you will be amazed what happens and so for six days they're marching around just marching around one time going back to their camp and hanging out come back the next day march around one time go back to their camp and hang out on the seventh day they're marching and I can imagine they're thinking man at one time a day was easy but all of a sudden the second time and the third time they're getting worn out and looking crazy what is going on but all of a sudden on the seventh time when they march around and the trumpets begin to sound all of a sudden the walls come crashing down and they can go into Jericho they're able to go in and they're able to possess the land they're able to defeat the enemy and Rahab because of what she had done and, and, the, and the love and the care she had shown before Rahab have and her family are saved but the rest of the people are taken because of that and all of a sudden they go and defeat Jericho and now thousands of years later or probably around a couple thousand years later there's a man named blind Bartimaeus and he is right outside of Jericho the difference is he doesn't have walls around him physically but he's got walls around him inside he's got conditions inside that have walled things up he can't see he's blind he literally cannot see what's going on and he has these things but I believe for Bartimaeus it went far beyond just a physical wall or even a, a something wrong with a sickness I believe in his body in his mind there was something that was going on he mentally had walls up all of his life he's been called names all of his life he's been said things about all of his life he's told to just sit over there and leave everybody alone and now he is carrying the walls that society has put on him walls of how they have labeled him you're blind Bartimaeus you leave us alone you get over there you just go do your thing and we're gonna do our thing and now all of a sudden he realizes something and Jesus is on his way and I just want to tell you some of you walked in here today and you don't have physical walls around you walk in here freely but you walked in with some walls that you're carrying some walls you put up some walls of some things in your life over the years that you've resurrected these walls and you said I'm stuck right here and I believe just like Jesus did 2,000 years ago he has come today to set you free from every wall the enemy wants to put around you amen Every wall the enemy wants in your life, Jesus came to set you free. He came to free you from those things. He came to change you. But here is what made the difference 
in Bartimaeus's life. It was one word, and it's what Jesus tells him at the end. Go your way, your faith has made you whole. Your faith. People ask me sometimes, are you one of those prosperity gospel, you're part of the word of faith movement? Or, uh, the truth is this, I'm not a name it and claim it, blab it and grab it preacher in the sense that I, don't, I, I, I wish I could just say anything and anything would appear. I've tried that with a million dollars and it's never worked over and over and over. They say, are you word of faith? I can promise you this, I'm not word of doubt. I can promise you that, okay? That I believe we're called to have faith. You can put me whatever camp you want in. Once again, people try to label everybody. I don't like labels, so I'm just telling you I'm a Jesus guy. But I do know one thing, that faith makes all the difference. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We've got to have faith to even come to God. We've got to have faith to trust God. We've got to have faith to believe that God is the God of the impossible. We've got to have faith to know that even all the things we talked about this morning and you've heard from the stage, we are a church that loves to be vulnerable because the truth is this. We all go through things. We all struggle. We all have things that God is trying to work in our life. But we are a church of faith that we believe as we come with our faith that God makes us whole. God changes us. But we got to have faith. you got to trust and you got to believe. And here's the thing. Some of you say, well, Pastor, i got some faith. Man, you don't know everything that's come up against me. You don't know how hard it is. I, I feel like my faith is getting less and less and less. And here's the good news. That Jesus said it this. If you have the faith the size of a, size of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is tiny. If you have a little bit of faith. God says, I can work with it. If you have no faith, if you're full of doubt and unbelief, I can't do anything. But if you'll just have a little bit of faith, if you'll just take that one step, the Bible says, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. When you take one step toward God, he takes a step towards you. And the good news is, his step is a lot bigger than your step. If you just make one little move, he is waiting and ready to heal and set free and deliver. But you've got to have the faith to say, Lord, I need you right now more than anything else. Lord, come and heal me. Come and help me. Come and save me. And I believe blind Bartimaeus, faith is what made him whole. Amen? So how do we live in faith in the midst of everything going on around us? Let's just be honest for a second. Life is not easy right now with everything going on around us. You go to the gas pump and fill up your car and it takes what, you know, all your money for even food and things that you've budgeted to fill your car up. Groceries are skyrocketing. As a, as, a, as a parent of a newborn, thankfully we've been really good. I mean, we're, we're taken care of, but I'll be honest with you, whenever you can't go to the shelf and you can't find formula and you begin to panic thinking, what are we going to do? And thankfully we've, we've got plenty, but my point is the world right now is a place where you can begin to rub your hands together and say, woe is me, and live with anxiety and fear and worry and doubt, and how are we going to do it? How are we going to make it? And I believe this, the, the thing that's going to get us through right now is not just arguing and fighting about everything. It's not getting mad at each other on social media and fighting on Facebook and Twitter. What's going to get us through is our faith in Jesus Christ, because guess what? When the world changes, he never changes. When everything around us gets crazy and all these things are going on behind the scenes and all this stuff is happening guess what the one constant thing we have in our life his name is Jesus Christ he is Emmanuel God with us and he's still with us in the struggles in the hard times he does not leave and we put our faith and our hope in him amen so three things this morning how do we do it three things for blind Bartimaeus number one stay focused on Jesus for a minute, I want you just to remember the story. Here's blind Bartimaeus sitting over here with his cloak around him. Give me a second. If you ever grew up in Pentecostal churches, these are the things you put on people's legs when they fall out. And we just have one back there, so I, I got it. Sorry. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It's okay if you don't. Um, he's sitting here with his garment. And I can imagine his mind, he's thinking, I've tried everything else. I mean, I've tried everything they told me to try. All the things they told me to do, I've done it. And I'm still in the condition I'm in. Not only was he blind, he obviously didn't have anything. He couldn't make a living because he's asking for money. He's on the side of the road begging. And he thinks, I've tried everything and nothing is working. But all of a sudden, he hears something. And I love this. He hears there is a man coming by, by the name of Jesus. And in the midst of everything going on, he could have focused on everything else. But he stayed focused on Jesus. He stayed focused on him. That's why the Bible says this in Hebrews, looking 
looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You know how Jesus endured the cross? Because he, I believe he stayed focused on us. He stayed focused on redemption. He stayed focused on the master plan. And the plan was he would give his life so that we could be redeemed. And you know how we make it through? We look to Jesus. We stay focused on him. We stay tuned in to who he is. No matter what's going on around us, all the junk the world gives us, all of these things that distract us, we keep focused on Jesus and we look to him and we realize he has the answers that we need. Amen? Not only did he focus on Jesus, but then number two, we have to not listen to the crowd. Benjamin, my son's two years old, and we've been, uh, every other week, been having a little golf scramble out here with people from the church. And So I've been taking him out there with me, give mama a break, because we also have a six-month-old. So give mama a break from the chasing the two-year-old. And, and I've taught Benjamin, when somebody's hitting, you be quiet. The problem is he doesn't understand. So the whole time they're hitting, he's like, shh, be quiet, shh, be quiet. I'm like, being quiet means don't talk. Don't say be quiet. The whole time they're hitting because you're not really being quiet. He's like, he looks at me and goes, shh, be quiet. And I'm like, I w- wish you'd figure out your own words, please. Here's blind Bartimaeus, and the crowd is yelling at him because he's sitting here, and Jesus walks by, and he begins to yell out. He can't, once again, he cannot see. All he can hear is the pitter-patter of people coming by. But he knows there's somebody coming, knows Jesus is on his way, and so he screams out, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd says, be quiet. Be quiet. We're trying to entertain Jesus. He's in Jericho. Don't embarrass us. Don't humiliate us. Don't say things that are going to make us look bad. But I love blind Bartimaeus' answer. His answer is, okay, okay. And then they, they go about their business. He goes, you know what? I'll say it a little bit louder. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. In other words, you want me to be quiet, but I'm going to do it even louder. It reminds me of David when David is there. And I I read this story just this week in my devotion here. It's David, and they're bringing the ark of God back to uh, to Jerusalem, to the the temple, or to the tabernacle. And they're, they're bringing this back, and as they do, the ark begins to fall, and Uzzah goes to hold the ark, and as he does, God kills him because he goes to steady the ark, and I could preach a whole message on that, but anyway, in that that moment, they take the ark, and they put it in the house of Obed-Edom, and about three months later, they realize God is blessing the house of Obed-Edom because the presence of God is there, and where the presence of God is there, things are blessed, amen? And so David says, we need that up here. Like, we need that back in the, in, the, in the capital up here. We want that blessing. So they go down, and every few steps, they stop, and they worship the Lord. And the Bible says he has on a linen cloth, his outer, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically his undercloak. And he's wearing that, and he's dancing, and he's twirling, and he's praising. And one of his wives sees him, and when he gets back to the house, she says, you embarrassed yourself today, that you acted that way in front of all the ladies of, the, of, the, of Israel. You acted that way in front of everybody, and you showed off, and you embarrassed yourself. And I love David's response. David's response was, you know what, if you think that's anything, just wait till we do this again, because next time, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet, I promise you. Like, next time, I'm going to worship even greater. And blind Bartimaeus is sitting there, and they say, be quiet. And he says, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And there are times in your life you've got to not listen to the crowd. Listen to me. The mob will take you away. The mob will destroy you. If you listen to the crowd and you go the way of the crowd, then things will happen. But if you begin to stay focused on Jesus and don't listen to the crowd, you listen to what Jesus is saying. You read his word and you get the word of God in your heart. And no matter what people are saying around you, no matter what the country is saying, the media is saying, you focus on Jesus and you tune out the crowd and you begin to cry out to Jesus for who he is. Amen. And then thirdly, not only do you stay focused on Jesus, he didn't listen to the crowd, but then number three, we've got to lay aside our garments. I want you to understand what this garment was for for Bartimaeus. Number one, if you're out in the sun, we recognize this lately how hot it's been. We have a, the, right now it's uh, cooling off of 82 degrees, so we wore our coats this morning. This coat would have been the shade for him. 
all day long so the sun didn't beat down on him. So here he is, he can use it as shade when he feels the sun coming down on him. And then whenever he's asking for money, if people were true Jewish believers and they followed the law, they were not allowed to touch Bartimaeus because something was wrong with him. And so he would sit there with this in his lap and he would hold it up so that they couldn't touch him. And he knew if he did this, they could walk by. Even though he couldn't see him, they could walk by and throw money in there. And, he would, and they would not be able to, they, they, they could do it without touching him and breaking the law. So this cloak was everything to him. It was his worldly possessions. It was covering by day. It was a way at night for him to be able to, to sleep and to have a pillow. This was everything in his life that meant anything to him. And some scholars believe that blind people had to wear certain cloaks that had certain colors so that they could be noticed far away. So as you're walking up, you could realize that's a blind person. He's asking for money because of the cloak that they wore. And the Bible says he is sitting there and the crowd saying, be quiet. And he's screaming. And all of a sudden they tell him hey, listen, be quiet this time for a reason because he's asking for you. He's calling you. And the Bible says this. He doesn't just get up and walk over there. Once again, the Bible is very specific in what it tells us that happens. He didn't just get up and walk to Jesus. The Bible says he is sitting there and they said he wants to talk to you and he, all of a sudden he stands up and the Bible says he lay, lays aside his garment and he walks toward Jesus. I believe what blind Bartimaeus was saying was this. You know what? I've tried everything else. I got one more shot at this thing and I'm going to give it to Jesus. I've tried everything else and I am tired of trying to hang on to things myself. I'm tired of trying to do things myself. I'm tired of the walls that have surrounded me. I'm tired of the mental anguish that is around me. I'm tired of the walls of anxiety that are around me, surrounding me. I'm tired of this, and I want to be healed. I want to be made whole. I want to see today. And so because of that, I will throw everything aside, everything I think is good, everything I think I've got to have, everything I'm putting my hope in, I will get rid of it so I can go to the one person that can make difference the one person that can change things and he lays aside his garment and he walks over to where Jesus is at and he was willing to let it go my question to you today is how bad do you want the walls to fall down how bad do you want deliverance how bad do you want things to change how bad are you willing to lay aside whatever it takes to get to Jesus are you willing to surrender whatever it takes for him to be Lord and King of your life I'm not talking about salvation getting to heaven one day I'm saying there's some of you that have carried walls for years walls of anger and resentment and bitterness and God is saying today if you will lay aside those things and walk to me I've got something in store for you that you can't even imagine. Eye has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him that God's got something for you but you've got to lay aside everything to get to him. Amen. Well the worship team join me very quickly. Here's what happens. He walks over to Jesus and I'll be honest with you this is probably sacrilegious for some of you if I haven't offended you in the service already I'm probably doing to right now. Because Jesus says, what would you like? I can see the guy like, I mean, Jesus, what do you think I want? Sir, do you have a donut on you? What do you think I want? I'm sitting here begging. I'm blind. What do you think I want? But I believe Jesus asked a question for a reason. Jesus was always asking questions, and I believe here's the reason. Because he wanted to get to the heart of where people were at. What do you really want, blind Bartimaeus? What do you really want? And he said, that I can have my sight. Listen, Jesus asked these questions because he is trying to get us to a place where we dig down deep. What is it we really want? Do you want the symptoms taken care of? Or do you want true deliverance? Do you want real freedom? Do you want just a little bit of something? Because Jesus was saying, is he saying, I mean, I don't know, maybe blind Bartimaeus is saying, Jesus, you're going around preaching, maybe, maybe, maybe you have some money, so would you give me some money? I, I need to buy lunch today. Would you do this for me? And in the midst of all that, he says, what do you really want? And blind Bartimaeus says, that I may have my sight. And Jesus looks at him and says, buddy, you've got it, because you know what? Your faith got you right here. Your faith helped you stay focused 
on me. Your faith helped you not listen to the crowd. Your faith is what helped you lay aside the garment. It was your faith that got you here. And blind Bartimaeus, your faith has made you whole. You go, and all of a sudden, I love this. The Bible says this. He, he, he was healed, and he turned around, and he followed after Jesus. I love that. Number one, it shows he was healed. He wasn't following the crowd. He was following Jesus. He could see him. He could see him. And this morning, I want some of you to see Jesus in ways you've never seen him before. My prayer is today, some of you will see Jesus. Here's the thing about it. Here's what I love about being a Christian. I'll be honest with you. Religion and church and all that. I, I love worshiping together. Don't misunderstand me. But getting caught up in religion, and I have no interest in any of that. The, the thing that gets me coming back, gets me coming back to my prayer closet every day. The thing that keeps me coming back to loving people and serving people, it is one thing it is Jesus I have loved Jesus since I was a little kid and I've always been a Jesus guy and my prayer is I'll be a Jesus guy until he takes me out of here it's not religion and it's not churchiness it's not just being this uh, this person that is going around all the time trying to act holy it's simply I'm in love with a man named Jesus and he loved me when he didn't have to he cared for me when he didn't have to and here's blind Bartimaeus who said, everybody else has given up on me. Everybody else has quit on me. Everybody else has told me to be quiet. Everybody else has done everything to me. But I found a man who loved me enough to stop what he was doing and talk to me and interact with me. And I found a man who was willing to help me be healed. And I want you to know today, I promise you this. This world will let you down. Friends will let you down. Things will happen that will hurt you all over the place. But Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He is a friend through the good times and the bad. He is the one that will never leave you nor forsake you. And on days when I feel like everybody in the world is against me, I know there's one person that is for me and not against me. And his name is Jesus. And I run to Jesus because I know he is the answer. He is the one that can change everything and today what I'm telling you is this he wants to invite you to this place where you lay aside the garment you come to him in faith and he will heal you and make you whole will you stand to your feet with our prayer teams join me down here thank you so much for listening to this week's message I pray it was a blessing to your heart and I pray that it challenged you and encouraged you I want to say a prayer over whatever you're going through right now we believe we serve a God who is more than able to minister, to make a difference. And so I want to say a prayer over you right now. Father, I just thank you for those that are listening right now, that you are working in their life in ways they can't even see, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above what they could ever ask, or think. I just pray for strength right now for the journey. I pray that you be with them, continue to touch them and strengthen them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you again for listening. We look forward to seeing you next week. If you want to find out more about us, you can go to our website at landmarkchurchok.com. We're on social media. We love you guys. Look forward to seeing you soon.